So hello everyone, my name is Aditi. I am an applied ML intern in the AI engineering team. Today I will be presenting my work on aspect-based sentiment analysis, ABSA for short. So to understand aspect-based sentiment anal analysis, let's first review traditional sentiment analysis. In the traditional case, the sentiment is expressed on an entire sentence or document. So for this example here, it would be a neutral classification. In ABSA, on the other hand, sentiment is expressed on a particular aspect in the sentence. Here we want the system to predict positive for pizza and negative for the service. In one sentence, aspect-based sentiment analysis seeks to identify sentiments towards specific aspects of an input. You can also think of it as a more fine-grained sentiment analysis that provides you with targeted sentiment information. There are usually four elements involved in aspect-based sentiment analysis. The first one is the aspect term, which explicitly appears in the input text, such as pizza in this sentence. Each aspect term can fall into uh, under an aspect category, like food, and the opinion term explicitly expresses the words associated with the sentiment on the aspect, so something like delicious for pizza. And the sentiment polarity is either positive, negative, or neutral to express the sentiment on the aspect term. While there can be countless applications for uh, ABSA, the biggest and most obvious one is customer feedback analysis. So aspect-based sentiment analysis is a way to understand and measure customer satisfaction in more detail and on, a, on particular areas of a product or service, and so that those areas can be targeted for improvements. Now, in the chatbot space, traditional sentiment analysis has made quite a difference in how chatbots interact with users. So adding a, a ABSA to this will help bots refer to specific parts of a conversation and improve performance. One other thing that I would like to add is any sort of notes, transcripts, or even social media could make use of aspect-based sentiment analysis. Just last year, there was a study on using ABSA on psychiatric clinical notes to study suicide in youth. So we can see that the scalability and benefits of real-time aspect-based sentiment analysis could be applied to many fields. Now, ABSA is something new that the AI engineering team is exploring and would be part of our conversational AI and large language model group of projects. So my goal this summer was to essentially get the work started on it. I won't be able to cover everything I did in the time allotted, but I will highlight the main results. So one of my tasks was to explore state-of-the-art research in this space. I began my work with looking at a comprehensive survey on different approaches to aspect-based sentiment analysis. Most of the area, most of the work in this area uh, has focused on using pre-trained models like BERT or GPT-2 as backbones of models specifically designed for aspect-based sentiment analysis tasks. Instead of doing that though, I have and, and having to train and fine tune on the limited number of data sets available, I explore prompt engineering with large language models. And at the same time, I was looking at different toolkits that were out there. I tried uh, them out. Uh, there were some issues I ran to, into, but these cool toolkits can be explored further. And lastly, I quantitatively and qualitatively analyzed the generation performance of the newly released OPT models and compared it with the performance of other models on various prompts that are essential for aspect-based sentiment analysis. So uh, aspect-based sentiment analysis has traditionally used two SEM eval data sets with reviews on laptops and restaurants. Other data sets are mostly derived from these data sets, and I've used these for my quantitative analysis, as you will see. Now, in terms of evaluation in the ABSA space, we are often looking for exact matches, which means the prediction is correct if and only if all the predicted elements are the same as the human annotations. So in this case, we, you, we can use the standard classification metrics such as accuracy or F1 scores. Accuracy is the percent of our inputs the model uh, identifies correctly and is best used for balanced data sets. And the F1 score is derived from the precision and recall values best used for imbalanced data sets. There are different variation of tasks we can look at for aspect-based sentiment analysis based on some research and literature review. I focus on determining the sentiment given the aspect term. So given pizza and service in, for the sentence, the goal would be to determine the sentiment for each. Now, to give everybody an overview, uh, to like to focus on this task, I made use of a widely popular approach in NLP called prompt engineering. Now, prompt engineering essentially means adding additional sentences to an input to the input text that helps direct large language models to perform certain tasks. So, in this movie sent uh, movie review sentiment classifier, 
setup, we provide the model with example reviews and added statements and ask it to generate positive or negative classification. That's the approach I'll be using. So uh, while I explored multiple papers over the summer, I, I, I want to highlight one called Open Aspect Target Sentiment Classification with Natural Language Prompts. So the authors of this paper, you added closed form sentences, so which have these masked keywords that would be similar to what one might uh, write to express the sentiment in, in their review. And then these uh, la then language models like BERT, GPT-2 were used to fill in these masked words and pred or predict the next word in the review. The predicted word is then associated with sentiment polarity. So this is their setup for how they implemented it. The paper focused mostly on fine tuning the language model on the entire data set. So this is like a, the full shot approach that uh, I've shown on the slide, but this is not ideal for different use cases when we don't have the full data set available since the aspect based sentiment data sets are mostly in the, are um, exclusively in the laptops and restaurants domain. And recent large language models have shown remarkable capabilities with zero and few shot learning. So we move forward toward focusing on that. Now, I learned about the Meta's recently released open source OPT models. The biggest one they have is 175 billion parameters released this May. Vector researchers set up an API on the cluster with this model, so I played around with that. And from a qualitative perspective, I found some great results for our, our task that we're trying to solve uh, on the API. So the goal was to explore them a bit further. And I did find that uh, the, there were OPT models with lower number of parameters accessible through Hugging Faces Transformers Library. So I used that for quanti uh, a quantitative and qualitative assessment. But first, uh, so since, since I was focusing on a zero shot and few shot approach, I joined the available training and testing data sets. We had a lot more samples to work with. Now, I would like to mention that from these like data distribution gaps, we see there is a significant imbalance between the positive, negative, and neutral classes, especially for the restaurants domain, and which was something to keep in mind when reviewing the results. And one more thing I would like to highlight is that some aspect terms in the data set labeled as neutral were actually quite ambiguous. So for example, in on the, on the top example here, portions of the data is described as mediocre, which should ideally be like, correspond, it, it corresponds with a negative sentiment rather than the neutral one it was labeled with. So there's ambiguity there. And there were others that were labeled as positive or negative, but should ideally be neutral. So there is a bit of subjectivity with the labeling that uh, keep keeping that in mind. Now, uh, so th that was one of the reasons why I began with trying out the OPT models on only the positive and negative neutrals just to begin with in a few shot approach. So I did try a couple of different prompts, like just stating the state uh, sentiment on a particular aspect or setting up the task in uh, explicit question answering format. The prompt on the top right showcases showcases some of the good results. I start off with some um, I started off with some example sentences in the form of questions and then that, that I asked the model to answer. And the graph here shows the accuracy in F1 scores are increasing as the number of parameters increases for the OPT models as expected. And the bottom right shows a confusion matrix for the 30 billion model with the best F1 score. Since the data set is heavily imbalanced, F1 score is the best measure to look at and we can see that it's increasing here. Now, uh, to accommodate the positive, negative, and neutral samples, I tweaked the prompt a little bit. And from the graph, we can see the F1 score was a little less predictable in this case uh, for as the number of parameters increased and peaked at 6.7 billion, uh, the 6.7 billion model rather than the 30 billion model that we saw before. And so I, the next thing that, that I did was try some of the samples that were misclassified from, uh, from here on the OPT 175 billion model API. In the, so this one example, the first example here, I found the 6.7 oh, billion OPT model sometimes reverts to kind of looking at the sentiment on the entire sentence rather than the aspect. So it predicted neutral here. Uh, the, the 175 billion one is able to associate the sentiment more correctly. And there, uh, these, this was the case for um, multiple of the ones that were misclassified. And then from this uh, second example, I would like to point out that both these models, like both the OPT models have a difficult time with sarcasm. So that's uh, something to kind of explore further into how we can get sarcasms, uh, sarcasm um, uh, classified correctly. 
And uh, what the other thing I did was uh, looking at the data sets with just the positive and negative inputs. I tried the same prompt for different types of GPT-2 and uh, Eleuther AI's um, uh, GPT-J models. So we can see here with the GPT-2 model with the sim similar level of uh, parameters when, as compared to the OPT model, it has a higher accuracy than the OPT model, but the F1 score is lower since it pretty much just predicts positives. And since there's a lot more positives, the accuracy is high, but the F1 score is low. Lower. And then um, looking at JPTJ, it, it was better at predicting positives and negatives, but it doesn't seem to predict them correctly. Like it was predicting them, but not as correctly. That's why the F1 score is like really low. But from trying out different prompts on different types of models, and I observed that the performance of the OPT was a bit more resilient and more predictable than the than the other uh, GPTJ and GPT2 models. So when the prompts were varied. And while these results are just for the few shot case, uh, the models don't quite well don't perform well for the zero shot case since they were struggling to figure out the task they needed to solve. I was in the works of implementing a zero shot uh, generation with a simple sentiment classifier, but wasn't able to complete that just yet. Uh, so just to go over, I just faced some challenges over summer, but I was able to learn a lot from them. I hadn't previously worked with multiple GPUs, so just getting started with that was a bit difficult, but I learned to distribute the models over multiple GPUs to get the results we wanted. And I also str struggled and learned a lot about working with virtual environments on the cluster and sending Slurm jobs. Lastly, I really enjoyed learning about Hugging Face. It's quite honestly like such a uh, remarkable library for work working on anything NLP related. And I did create a GitHub repo for my work, and I'm in the process of documenting everything so I can pass it off to future interns and uh, and team members. And this summer, I pretty much just got to start got, got started with aspect based sentiment analysis. So there's a lot that can be done in the future, such as exploring more papers, checking out the toolkits in more detail, as well as adding aspect based sentiment analysis to AI engineering teams uh, and neural agent assistant that Alice will talk about next and to working with different multiple languages. Uh, recently, the Bloom model was released for multilingual language modeling. So that's something to explore. And lastly, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my presentation. And I would like to thank my supervisor, Pfizer, for all her amazing advice and the entire Vector community for making this uh, such a great lear learning experience. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Testing one, two, three. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, do you have examples of this type of systems actually being used in the industry today? I don't know uh, if they are currently being used or just experimental. This is more on the experimental side based on my um, the, re the research I've completed, but there was a study last year that was using, as, as I mentioned, it was using uh, aspect based sentiment analysis for like a psychiatric uh, cl clinical notes for suicide um, for youth, like uh, analyzing that. So it's getting more and more just because of the large language models that we have available, it's getting more and more um, applications. So there are applications out there, and uh, we've more research that has been going into the specific part of sentiment analysis. Okay, thank you. Sorry about um, so I'm more just out of curiosity, uh, assuming that the generative models don't always respond by generating positive, negative, or neutral, uh, I just wanted to hear how you dealt with that, or so if maybe they are. So in, in the setup, in the prompting that I was doing, um, most of the, well, like uh, for almost all the samples there were, they were generating because I was giving them the setup that I wanted, especially for the OPT models. They are, they are, they're working well with um, setting up the problems, setting like a question or answer. And, and if you set, the, if you give it those uh, few shot samples, it is predicting the correct thing. And in some cases, even when I was giving it positive and negative uh, samples, it was even predicting neutral samples. So it has um, that capability, but there is a way of implementing uh, a classification head where you, where you ask the model to predict uh, specific words such as good, bad, and okay, and then having that kind of translate to positive, negative, or neutral. And so uh, that would be one of the next steps that we can explore in this case. 
Gotcha. So in this case, the prompts were effective enough to limit the responses to the correct classes then? Yes. Hi, so I was just wondering, because I kept seeing extremely small sort of sample sizes, um, did you guys, uh, and, and maybe I didn't really catch it, but did you guys use synthetic data generation or consider it, or why or why not? Uh, we have, well, so um, the sample sizes, so this is one of the uh, the two data sets that I mentioned, laptops and the SAM eval data set for laptops and restaurants are the main data sets that are used in this space. And yes, they're very, very limited. That's why we were trying to approach it from a few shot or zero shot perspective so that we can kind of expand it to other data set. Uh, we have, we, we were discussing about building a synthetic data set, but we haven't gotten the chance to do that yet. Understood. Okay, thanks.